More pings, more bubbles sent home, more children off school. Now, one in 20 in England, not in class because of COVID. More questions about how to solve the problem of schools, space and self-isolation. And more of the calls parents dread. Hello, it's Co-op Academy Grange. It's Tyrus. But first, at this school in Bradford, they're chasing up COVID test results. Oh, have you got his result back, the PCR test back? It feels strangely tense. Um, but they don't hold their breath for the answer anymore. It's now just normal. Is that okay? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. <laughs> All good. All negative so far, so it's good. Test, test, test. We were told back at the start. And in a storeroom at the Co-op Academy Grange in Bradford, they've got about 70,000 of them. There's increasing talk about daily testing to avoid kids having to go out into self-isolation as a potential way forward. What's been your experience with testing? My experience of testing is that uh, when we ask young people to uh, test twice a week and when we ask them to report that in so that we know where they are, um, I've got a low uptake in actually knowing how many tests have actually been taken. I think moving forward, if we were to do testing uh, which would allow children to come into school, I think we would see some traction there. So I would be encouraging that. Figures released today show 375,000 children were off school in England for COVID-related reasons as of Thursday last week. That's an increase of more than 130,000 on the week before. But only a small fraction of those children had actually tested positive for COVID, just 4%, while the vast majority were self-isolating because of a contact at school. But the suggestion now that from September, children would be able to keep on coming to school after a contact, self-isolation replaced with a rapid COVID test every morning. Something around 200 schools have already been piloting. Well, we have to make sure that the, this daily testing trial is effective uh, in controlling the virus. And that's a matter for the scientists to advise us on, uh, having looked at the data from the trial, which finishes tomorrow. But this programme understands that pilot has been ended early in at least one area in the north of England because of concerns about the high Delta case rate and how fast the variant spreads. But at this school in Bradford, it's not just self-isolation that's keeping children away. How much time have some of the children missed? At the top end. We've got families in, in Pakistan um, who have gone there before Christmas and are still there. And because it's so much money f to go into a hotel and there might be five or six family members that have got to transfer from Pakistan to a hotel in this country, the cost implication means that they're not coming back yet. They can't come back because they've not got the money. So you've got kids who are essentially stranded in Pakistan at the moment? Yeah and have been since Christmas. Yep. And for those here, in a city where the COVID case rate's been consistently above the national average, inevitably, there's a bigger impact. Like for Cassin, after three self-isolations just this year. Are you saying that you actually now prefer learning at home yeah. on a computer yes. than being in school? Yes, mainly because I feel like it's more kids at school, they stress about things, they see a classroom, and they'll worry about, oh, I have to do this or that. But at home, it's, it's just nature. It's, not, it's natural to them and their brain of what they can do. I did put all my you know, blood, sweat and tears into the revision I did do. And Diana, waiting for her GCSE results. The biggest issue I've kind of encountered with exams this year is kind of feeling like I almost don't deserve my GCSEs. For some of our children, they've had to self-isolate for three or four times, whereas in other parts of the country, that really hasn't been the norm. So I think we have to expect that, yes, it has had a big effect on them.